All right, my name is Dr. Rayshon Ray, aiming to speak truth to power, and this is my daily thought. Uh, I'm sitting in the parking lot getting ready to vote in the 2016 presidential election. And I'm sitting here thinking about the comment that Donald Trump made recently at the third debate by calling Secretary of Clinton a nasty woman. And I think it becomes important to unpack what he meant by that comment. What sociological research says when people make comments like that, particularly men about women, what they mean. And so, is it sexism? Um, yes. And this, this becomes why. Part of it is that when men make comments like that about women and call them a nasty woman, essentially what they're saying is, is that normally women are being assertive. Women are in leadership positions. And oftentimes this means women do not need a man to um, to potentially help uh, carry them along. And oftentimes women are, um, are oftentimes refuting and opposing what men are saying and what men are doing. And most men can't handle those sort of things. I mean, it's also it also comes off a nasty woman also means in this regard that those particular characteristics for women mean that they are being rude. So assertiveness for women oftentimes means that they're being rude, that they're not being respectable, that they are trying to be better, uh, being be, that they're trying to be better than men and oftentimes are better than men. And this is what we see in Hillary Clinton. See, most men can't handle that. Most men uh, can't handle women being their equal. A lot of men also can't handle women making more money than them. Um, and, and there's a lot of sociological research that highlights this from my colleague, uh, Dr. Jeff Lucas at the University of Maryland, who's done a lot of research showing that uh, that, that women, um, it becomes more difficult for women in leadership positions, that they're less likely to be liked um, when they are pursuing uh, leadership positions. They're perceived as being stuck up. They're perceived as being moody. They're perceived as being domineering. They're perceived as being overbearing. All uh, characteristics that make men more successful actually lead to women being less successful. And the more successful that women are, they become less liked. Whereas men, the more successful they become, they become more liked. Um, it's also perceived that women have less competency or that they some kind of way can't juggle a whole bunch of things they're doing. So take uh, the work by Dr. Shelley Carell at Stanford and Dr. Steve, Stephen Bernard at, at Indiana. And what they found is that um, there is a, a highly double standard in the workforce when it comes to individuals who have kids. Women, men who have kids actually get a bonus. They actually get certain privileges. They end up getting paid more money. When women have children, they get paid less money because the perception is that they're going to invest less at work because they're investing more at home because our perceptions and our attitudes, our implicit attitudes and our real attitudes about women's place suggest that women should be at home. So when women enter the workforce, that becomes something that people can't necessarily handle and deal with. It. So what they found for women is that it becomes a penalty. But this is what's great about, about sociological research. Research actually shows that women and people oftentimes become more productive at work when they have kids. Why? Because they have less time, which means they have to use that time more wisely. So what that suggests on one hand is that people end up kind of wasting time. Um, and we still know that women are pulling the second shift when they come home. Second shift is when they come home and they end up having to not only go to work and work full time and provide for the help, provide for the family, but then they also have to do the caregiving and the housework, all the homework, all of the other things that you have to do when you come home. So, I mean, there are a lot of myths that need to be de debunked. Um, my colleague, Dr. Philip Cohen, has some great blogs on this um, on his website. And, you know, to that point, people say that, that there's a, a, still a persistent gender gap in pay where women get paid about 75 cents of every dollar that men do. So that means people will graduate from college to, to be an accountant. The man makes 50,000, the, the woman, you know, makes 32,500. And obviously that is that that is a, an average in terms of thinking about it. But occupation still matters. But even within occupations, we still see um, the fact that women get paid less in each occupation because that is the rebuttal people make people say oh well women get paid less because they choose occupations where they get paid less but as Dr. Philip Cohen noted why should uh, certain female dominated professions get paid less than say a truck driver I mean we really have to think about what we're doing and I think teaching and nurses um, and, and nursing these are uh, things we should think about so as I think about sitting here in this parking lot getting ready to vote watching people go in and stand in line I think about Trump's comments and I think about those people who are supporting Trump. And in many respects, you are supporting that bigotry. 
you are supporting that sexism. And the claim I hear from people, people like, oh, well, but 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 he's a, he, he, he talks that way to everybody. Right. So that makes him an equal opportunist bigot. And part of that is being sexist, being racist, being homophobic, discriminating against people who have disabilities. And by you being OK with that, your silence is your acceptance. And then by voting for him, you are putting those particular practices and those attitudes into play. And so that's what we hear when we hear um, a nasty woman. We hear she she doesn't know her place. That's what we hear when we hear grab them by their private parts because this means women have one role and we've heard those type of comments from him. So when I think about what I'm about to do going into this election, I look forward to voting for uh, what I expect to be the first woman president of the United States of America. And I look forward to um, during the inauguration standing on the line of the National Mall the same way I did when President Obama was elected as the first African-American president. So I'm with her. And conversations matter like black lives and books. And I hope this sparks one.